David, let's first start off with uh, the aid uh, that the president has promised. What do we know about what's been promised and what's already there? Well, with the disaster declaration, he's basically freeing up federal funds to come in and help with the restoration. Plus, you've got the military is actually mobilized to help fight the flames and do a search and recovery efforts, which are still ongoing there. Bear in mind that we know about 36 deaths, but we've been warned that the number could easily go higher. And we still have a big area of the islands that we just don't know how many people might have died in. So we're still at the, the state where we can't even really begin to get a, a good idea of what the restoration is going to look like yet because we don't know the extent of the damage. And there's some concerns here about whether this continues spreading. There were statistics out there saying something like about 15 percent right now of all Hawaii was already in a drought. And of course, this particular area with Lahanai uh, is historically been a relatively uh, dry place and kind of exposed to those winds that have been coming off the sea because of this hurricane that I guess has been fanning these flames. Yeah, the hurricane situation, th th this is a strange situation to see because Hawaii is really used to dealing with hurricanes that hit the islands and hit them hard with winds and rain at the same time. This hurricane actually stayed well to the south of Hawaii. It skirted just past to the south a couple hundred miles. So they didn't have the rains this time around, but you had winds that were whipping around the very outermost edge of that hurricane coming up from essentially the southeast. And at the same time to the north of the islands, you had a high pressure system that was funneling winds sort of in the opposite direction. The two things combined and turned this into to just sort of like a fire hose of wind but with no rain. So you get into an area like West Maui, which is historically dry. It's yeah. on the side of the island that doesn't get much rain to begin with. It was just a tinderbox. Right, and the flames are still ongoing too, and that's the important thing. And it's not just in Maui, the big island is also affected. So this recovery effort is underway. At some point, uh, repair efforts will be made as well. What can you tell us about how insurance companies are getting ready for this? Well, with the insurance companies, I mean, they, they've sort of had test cases like this with California, unfortunately, where you have areas that have burned again and again. I expect you may see something similar happening in Hawaii where homeowners that are trying to rebuild may find suddenly it's a lot harder to get insurance because the companies feel like now they need to protect themselves in an area that they pre previously didn't consider a really high risk. Yeah. Are wildfires something that insurance companies typically cover? I mean, or do people have to buy special coverage for, for something like wildfire? You often have to buy special coverage, and I know here in California that has become a very big issue for a lot of homeowners. I have a friend of mine who lives in the foothills uh, and has told me it's essentially almost impossible to get a policy at this point. So I'm hoping very much that doesn't happen with Hawaii.